Many of you guys have stepped out to be a part of House Church over the last semester. We've seen God move in such an incredible way. We've seen house churches serving their communities. We've seen needs being met. We've seen multiple baptisms that resulted from the relationships cultivated in house church. And we've heard story after story of how God is building and restoring families on Wednesday nights. But we want you to hear from others just like you who have bought into house church and have seen it make a difference in their lives. Listen to this. The fellowship is on a more intimate scale than what you could get at church. The transparency and authenticity is also nice to see developing as we continue to dig in. We've been able to reach out and meet needs like we, are, like we are called to do in the scriptures. It's an opportunity to be present as a family. My children hear other adults and parents express life struggles. It's the first time they've been in this setting and they realize our family struggles with the same things as other families. My eighth grade daughter and fifth grade son feel so comfortable and speak up when they feel led. They almost feel more comfortable because they aren't just surrounded by peers. Only have a few family members and they aren't in our area. House Church is our family. Listen, you can't make that stuff up. If you're not a part of a house church here at Venture, you're missing out. A new semester is ahead of us, so take that next step into community. Join a house church, let God build relationships in your life, and see what your story will be. Hey, Happy New Year. I've been waiting since March the 14th to say that. Uh, that's kind of when everything hit, and I'm so glad 2021 is over, aren't you? I mean, it was a terrible year. I mean, all the things that happened with COVID and all the things that were happening politically and socially and economically, and you begin to think, hey, we're cursed, you know, what's going on? And so I'm so glad we're turning the corner on a lot of those things. But today I want to give you the secret, uh, and this is really important, and you don't let it kind of go past your head, uh, but I want to give you the secret to having the best year regardless of your circumstances. Because here's the thing about 2021, it's going to be a lot better, okay, circumstantially. But there are going to be things that happen in 2021 that you're going to go, hey, why'd that happen? Hey, I don't like that. Hey, that's not something I was really planning for. And so before we get into that, and before you make a whole lot of New Year's resolutions, I'm going to give you one thing, kind of a foundation for this year. I mean, it's one of those times where I know I've got a message that, man, I needed to hear. It's kind of one God is born into my soul and the secret to having the best 2021 is finding God's purpose for your life this year. Now, you're going, like, okay, well, yeah, all right. No, I thought about losing weight. No, 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 hold on. Not like this year, you finding what does God want to do in and through my life? Because he's got a plan for you. I mean, he loves you. He, he created you. He, there's a reason for you being here. You say, well... Well, what is a purpose? Well, a purpose is a clear mental picture of what you are to do and who you're to do it for on the planet, okay? And, and so we're going to talk about how to have a purpose today in finding your purpose and not just having, hey, my purpose is to get a better job. No, no, it's learning how to work in that job for the Lord and what he wants to do in your life. You say, well, my, my goal is to have a, have a different uh, marital partner. No, no, the, you're, you're, you know, the purpose that God has for you is to work on your marriage for him, for his glory and your good. Well, this year I'm going to lose weight. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you want to work on your health for him because you belong to him and you are his vessel, you're his temple. And so today we're going to look at somebody, because some of you may be saying, I know God didn't have a plan for me, I've done too many bad things. And it's so cool how Jesus finds people that are way off the grid, and you're going, hey, man, I'm not, at least I'm not that bad. And, and if God can do it in this person's life, then he can give me a purpose in my life. And so today we're looking at a lady, and she's got a bad reputation, okay? Okay, listen, you know, Taylor Swift, yeah, well, you and me, we have a big, bad reputation. But she's got a really bad reputation because she, she steals other people's husbands. I mean, all this is in the Bible. I mean, you don't need the bachelor. I mean, you got this. I mean, you know, you know like right here, you know, days of our lives. I mean, it's right here. I mean, she, she's got, she gets kind of loose as Zeus, and it's just one of those people, and she loses with shame. I, I mean, you know, she won't go, like, you know, to Walmart during the day. She goes at midnight. Uh, are you, any of you like that? Like you go to Walmart and you see somebody and like, you know, you try, like you see them on an aisle. Has it ever happened to you? With masks, it helps a little bit. But with me, there's a lot of people, that, you know, believe me, there are some people that don't like me. I am shocked by that. I'm such a humble guy. And so, I mean, you, you'll be like on an aisle and you'll be going around and you'll see them. You go, oh my gosh, I don't want to see them. 
And, and she was that person, and that's why she would go shopping the equivalent at Walmart at midnight. She was filled with shame, and she hid behind religion. You know, a lot of people do that. You know, you try to talk to them about their life. Well, I'm a Baptist. You know, well, hey, we have that. no, I'm Catholic. Uh, you, uh, you don't get, I'm Catholic. And you use religion as a shield to keep everybody away from you because you don't want them getting close to you and to, for God to work on the things in your life that are beyond religion and they're in a relationship. But here's the thing I want you to get today. Here's a lady who was stuck in making bad decisions. I mean, she just made bad decision after bad decision. I mean, some of you are like that. You know, I did some of that in 2020. Like, I would make a bad decision thinking, you know, that's not a good decision. And then, you know, I'd make that bad decision again. And then, then later on, I'd make that bad decision again. And I'm thinking, why am I making this bad decision? Because my purpose was not aligned with the purpose of God that he had in my life. And it just so happens this lady was making really bad decisions with regard to men because she didn't understand her purpose in life was not to have another man. It was to find Jesus so that she could put men in the proper perspective. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're going into this year thinking, you know, if I just find a husband, if I just find a wife, if I just find a boyfriend, if I just find a girlfriend, if I just find a friend then I'd be happy. And God said, no, no, hold on, hold on. Before you start reaching out there, why don't you ask me to reveal to you the plan and purpose I have for your life? So whether you're in high school or college or middle age or older, because older people go through like these crises of who am I now, you know? And, and God's got a plan for you and he wants to reveal it to you. And I'm going to tell you how you can figure that out, okay? John chapter 4, you're going to read this this next week in our reading plan. So make sure you download Venture Church app. You need that. It'll keep you on track. We're preaching on that stuff. It will help you because some of you aren't reading the Bible. I'll talk about that. But you need to start reading the Bible, okay? So John chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus learned the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Although, in fact, it wasn't Jesus. It was the disciples baptizing people. So he left Judea and went back to Galilee, and he had to go through Samaria. He had to go through Samaria because he had, a, he had a divine appointment with this lady that I'm talking about that had all those things that were going against her. So, so here's the thing you need to get right out of the chute, okay? And i got to do this quickly because they, they, they put the time down on me a little bit. And, but here's the reality. Like, he's got a divine appointment with you. He has to come through your school. He has to come through your neighborhood. He has to come through your workplace. He has to come through your problems because he's got an appointment with you. He's got to come into your life. And he, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground where Jacob given his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. And Jacob was tired. Jesus was tired from the journey. And he sat down by the well. It was about noon. Nobody came to the well at noon. It was too hot. She asked the time. When a Samaritan woman, here she comes, Sally from Samaria, she came to draw water and Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? His disciples had going to town to Chick-fil-A. And the Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan and I'm a woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews don't associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, me, and he would have given you living water. And she said, sir... You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where are you going to get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock? And Jesus said, everyone, Jesus is so cool. Now, you ought to read the Bible, if nothing else. Jesus is the coolest man who's ever lived. Because he comes back. You're talking about fast on your feet. He says, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water I give them will never be thirsty Indeed, the water I give them will be in them like a spring of water welling up into eternal life. And the woman said, sir, give me this water. I don't want to get thirsty. Keep coming here to draw water. He said, go call your husband and come back. She said, I don't have a husband. He goes, you're right. When you say you've had no husband, he's getting to the, to the bottom line. See, this is what the scripture does. It kind of gets into where you live because he wants to help you and God wants to love you. He's not judging you. He's getting to the root of what's going on in your life. Is the fact is you've had five husbands. The man you're now with is not your husband. So what you said is quite true. She says, sir, I see that you're a prophet. Here she goes playing the God card, the religion card. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you Jews claim that you worship over there. And she he finally says, woman, believe me, hey, the time has come. When you're going to worship me because I am. 
Now you're like, what does all that mean? What all that means is, and I want you to get this, a God purpose comes from an encounter with God. And in 2021, I want you to get that. You can have an encounter with God. It's not just for preachers. It's not just for the goody-goody people that go to church. I mean, this lady, man, she, she was not somebody that she would pick out and say, I want to build my church on this person right here. But Jesus was saying, hey, I've got a plan for you. And he comes into her life and reveals a plan and purpose that will change not only her life, but her whole town. Listen, the gospel is so powerful, it can turn a prostitute into a preacher. It can turn a pimp into a preacher. I mean, I mean I'm telling you, the, the word is powerful. You say, well, how do I have a God encounter? Because it sounds so hokey pokey, a God encounter. You know, you know is it going to be a miss? Like, you know, no, 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 no. Here's how you have a God encounter. There's four ways you can encounter God. And it doesn't happen all the time where you feel that, you know, the, the, oh, I feel I've got chill bumps. It's, it's, it's not chill bumps all the time. Sometimes it's hard. But the first way you begin is you read his word that is written to you in the Bible. And if I could just get you to do that, it would change you. You say, well, I read that one time. Now, you know, you probably didn't. That's why we have like stuff like this and we spend money on this. Like this is like, this has been in my pocket, so they're, they're better than this. But, but like a little reading plan, like every day, you know, everybody in our church is reading with you. And if you're not reading it, you ought to feel bad. So, so here's the thing. I'm just playing with you to make sure you're with me, okay? But you, you read this because this is God's word to you. This is the rawest form of God's word because Jesus was actually speaking to her. And she was listening. Listen, when you read the Bible, it is God's word to you. And if you will ask him before you read, well, I read it and I don't understand it. Every time I read it, I don't get anything out of it. We'll get a better translation, one. And number two, just pray before you start reading and say, God, God, speak to me. God, show me what you want me to know. Show me what you want me to see. That discipline alone will change your life. Secondly, begin having a conversation with God through prayer. You know what prayer is? Well, I can't pray. Some of you, did anybody do this at Christmas or somebody, maybe an uncle or you got a grandfather, this preacher, or, or somebody that, you know, so when, when they, they led the blessing, they went, oh, mighty Father God, Jesus, oh, holy one, holy immaculate one. And you're thinking, you were just cussing a man to go over there by the Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen, prayer is just talking to God. It's a conversation with God. You can have a conversation with God all day long. I mean, you don't talk out loud, but thank you, crazy. But you can at least in your head, you'll be thinking, like, like, I pray all the time. At night, it's when I pray the most. I mean, I'll pray for a long time because I'm talking to God instead of worrying about all these things. Hey, God, how about this? You know, God, here's over here. God, be with my children. God, be with my grandchildren, you know? You know, all this. Things. You can talk with God wherever you are. You say, well, I don't believe in God. She didn't either. This is the cool thing about prayer. You don't even have to believe in God to talk to him. But here's the scary thing. Some of you are like, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Be an atheist. That's okay. But if you start talking to God before long, that God that doesn't exist will start talking to you. And you'll begin to see things and hear things and know things that you never knew even existed. Number three, be open to godly guidance. For the first time, this lady was around a godly man. For some of you, the reason you have struggled in 2020 is that you run with the very worst people. I'm not saying God doesn't love them. I'm just saying they're a bad influence on you. Bad company corrupts your character. It's just a part of it. If you run with them and like you're, the, like you're Gandhi in your group and everybody else is terrible, you're going to struggle. In 2021, if you keep running with the group that's doing everything bad and you're the only person that realizes it's bad, you're in trouble. You, you need to be open to godly counsel. You need to be in situations where you can hear from God, from people who aren't perfect, but who will tell you the truth about your life and about it, the way God works. And so here she is talking to Jesus, and, and he has an influence on her. And guess what? She goes back to her town, and now she's, get this, this is so cool. She's the godly influence in her town. Fifteen minutes ahead of everybody else in her town. 
Look, look you don't have to be light years ahead of people to, to be used by God. Just be 15 minutes ahead of them. She, all of a sudden, she knows about living water. All of a sudden, she knows this man is different. And she goes back, and now she is godly counsel to all these people in her town. For some of you in 2021, God is calling you to be godly counsel to the people around you. Well, I'm not a preacher and I can't do this. I, look, you don't have to be. You just got to be 15 minutes ahead of the people you're around and God can use you. For some of you older people, if you're older than 50, okay, if you're older than 45, it's time for God to use you to pour into people. We have so many young people that come to venture. 72% of our people are under 35 and they're broke. Their brokers are run over turtle. They, they need encouragement. They need help. And you say, well, I want to be fed. Feed yourself. Listen, can you imagine taking a 50-year-old man or woman and putting them in a high chair and, and me feeding you? Go to the kitchen and make you something. And begin to feed other people. That is the growth in you. That's what happens as you grow spiritually. Well, you got to be fed as a baby. Then all of a sudden you kind of feed yourself as a young person. Then as you get older, you're feeding other people. You're cutting stuff up. You're getting things ready. You're opening your home. Listen, for a lot of our kids, man, they live in apartments. Like 10 of them in an apartment like rats. Running around in there. You, know, you got anything? They, you you want to bless a kid? Just bring a meal. I mean, we know how to get a crowd of kids here. It's real simple. You get a pizza. I mean, they'll come from everywhere. Like, oh, Jesus, boy, praise the Lord. Jesus food. You bring Chick-fil-A, they'll all get saved. But, but here's the bottom line. You begin to pour into them. You begin to love them. You begin to encourage them. It will give you a renewed purpose for your life. But here's the last thing. And this is the one that's going to mess you up. Because you've had so much bad theology that you're going to miss this. See the problems and difficulties in 2021 is a time to learn and grow. See, if you know God's purpose for your life, when bad things happen, you're going to go, oh my goodness, there's no God, there's God. No, you're going to go, okay, God, what are you, what are you doing? Okay, you, you can take me down a different path. This happened with COVID. I know you know that, but so many things in my life changed because I, I didn't go, oh my goodness, you have cursed the, the America. You've cursed America. I went like, well, God, what are you trying to tell me? So we go to house churches. We change up the way we do some things, change the way we think about things and the way we reach people. And you're seated differently and it's made us stay at home with our families more, which has been good and bad. But here's the thing about bad things. God's not punishing you when bad things happen. And some of you have heard that growing up. Oh, God's mad at me. God's punishing me because I sinned. And it was God's will that my mama died. No, it wasn't. We live in a broken world. Well, I didn't have enough faith or I wouldn't be sick. That is a lie from the pit of hell. If you've got faith the size of a little mustard seed, a little faith in a great God, he's going to hear your prayers. Here's the thing. Sometimes bad things happen and God's going to use them in your life to give you a change of pace that you've been needing to make anyway. Here's the problem with Sally's difficulties. She had really bad relationships and she was stuck in a cycle of bad relationships because her purpose was this. If I find the right man, everything in my life is going to be great. Going to be good. Bachelor's coming back out. Got a new bachelor. We were watching that last night. Lisa's not in here so I can say this. He came on. He came out of the swim pool without his shirt and she went, oh my goodness. I went, huh? And some of you are like, you know, if I just had that, you know, I'd, I said, baby, you, know, you, you got it right. You got a six pack, but I got a keg. And so here, here's the, here's, I'm sorry, that was not in the notes. But here's the thing that happened. I'm so sorry. I, I, give me time back on the clock. Here, here's, the, here's the thing. Look, she kept thinking, if I could just find the right man. But then she found Jesus. He was the right man for her. There's nothing wrong with finding a man or finding a woman, but you need to have Jesus first. 
When Jesus said to her, and he kept, she kept saying, well, we're going to worship over there. And when the Messiah comes, when the big guy comes, he'll tell us. And he said, I am. When he said, I am, he was using covenant language. He was saying, I am your man. We have an intimate relationship right now. A covenant relationship. It means to cut. It's what marriage is. He's saying, I am the man that you've been looking for. Listen, in 2021, this is the big word, okay? Would you be sensitive to God wanting to speak to you? To reveal some amazing things in your life? Not just at church, when you come to church. I mean, wherever you are. This lady was like at Walmart. She was at a well. She was in the middle of a desert. Jesus spoke to her. Listen, if you'll be sensitive, God will speak to you. Yesterday, and I don't have time to go into detail, but I was driving home. I want to get home and watch some of the ball games, you know, because this is a time when all I want to do is lay down on the couch and watch a ball game. I want to lay down, watch a ball game, and I want to eat nachos. And preferably those new, uh, those nacho fries with dill. Thing. And so anyway, so I, I was racing home to, you know, to lay down and eat nachos and, and watch the game. It's why I look so svelte. And, uh, and so I was racing home and I felt like God was saying, because I had the situation and I knew about it. And I felt like God was impressing on me. Go back and I want you to go back and do this. I'm, I don't want to do it. I'm going to go watch a ball game. Like, hey, it's Saturday, you know, like, like uh, tomorrow, you know, when I'm working, I'll, I'll do that. And I'll go over there and I'll do that. And so I kept driving and I kept feeling that nudge. You ever hear that nudge? You ever feel that nudge when God is saying, hey, I want you to kind of change things? And I want you, so you say, well, how would I know? How would I know if I'm having an encounter with God where he's speaking to me, you'll leave your bucket? She left her bucket. That bucket represented her plan. That, that bucket represented what she wanted to do. That, that, that bucket represented like, like, hey, hey, I'm willing to do whatever God tells me to do. I'm willing to change my plan. I'm willing to allow interruptions to come into my life. If you will be willing in 2021 to let interruptions come into your life where you say, hey, God, I wanted to do this. I was determined to do this, but I'm willing to do whatever you tell me to do. I'm going to tell you it will change you you begin to find that God has a plan for you and that he is wanting to work in you. But here's the problem. If you don't lean into that and say, God, I see that this is a problem. Listen, God may be using your difficulties to bring a different path in your life. 2021, the reason, listen, the reason some of you are going through so many difficulties is God's trying to get your attention. He's trying to say, you're not on the path I have for you. I've got a different plan for you. I want you to make some changes. Listen, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know that God says this. When the children of God were in Babylon, they weren't in Israel and Jerusalem at church. They were in Babylon. They were in captivity. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. If you'll only have an encounter with me, that they were in Babylon. He didn't say, you find a plan and I'll bless it. That's what some of you are doing. Like, I got a plan. I got a plan. I got a plan. We're going to make, I'm going to make this work no matter what. God said, I ain't blessing that plan. I ain't blessing that plan. I ain't blessing that plan. I'm doing it anyway. Here you go. And you're having one difficulty after another difficulty after another difficulty. And God said, that's not my plan for you. For some of you, listen, that when you, you're saying, I'm going to drink everything I want to drink and smoke everything I want to smoke and do whatever I want to do. And God said, you can do that. That's not my plan for your life. This lady thought that sleeping around was a good plan. I'm going to tell you something. I have never in 35 years of ministry had anybody walk into my office and say, man, the best thing I ever did was sleep around. Whew, so glad. No. You say, God, I want to do what you want me to do. I don't understand it. I don't like it. Listen, last year, the whole year, I was mad. I was tired. I said, God, I'm working too hard. Now, this is stupid when you say stuff like this to God. I said, I'm working too hard. I'm tired. I'm too tired to do this. Too tired. 
I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm quitting. I st- I'm stopping. I'm laying down. I'm, I'm tired. And, and, and I, kept, I didn't feel any release. And when COVID hit, it was like God, and this way he works with me, not with you. But he, it's like he, he punt, punted me down the street. On my, I landed on my feet, ready to go again like a ninja. Because he had a plan for me that was different than my plan for me. He said, well, whatever happened to Sally from Samaria? Well, Jesus spent two days with them. You know, this is off the record, okay? This is extra biblical information, but you give me time to, pray, to read and pray and think, and I find this stuff. The, the historians believe that this lady, Sally from Samaria, when Jesus stayed two days with them, she got baptized. And when she came up out of the water, they renamed her, not Sally from Samaria, but they renamed her Fotin, not 14. In the Greek, photin, it means to illuminate. It means light. And when she came out of that water, God began to use her so much so that Nero, who was the king over all the Roman Empire, had her beaten and bludgeoned to death and thrown into an empty well. But here's the thing we know about photin. That well wasn't empty. Because she was filled with life and living water. Just so happens today, you're going to get really a, a beautiful picture of what that looks like. Because we have a whole family uh, that's going to get baptized right now. And it's really a picture of what can happen the old to the new, death to life. So I want you to see this family being baptized and see a picture of Fotine happening right now. I want you to watch this. Listen, guys, I, I love this family, and I remember when we first met, you guys had just kind of gone back to Hattiesburg and gotten involved, and uh, we, we got to go to Topher's one day, and we sat and had lunch, and uh, Robert's been working the night shift, even tonight. He's a pharmacist over at Forest General, and I think that day he'd been working all night as well, and we began to talk about how he just wanted his family to look different, and I love, just like Jeff's message said, he'd had an encounter, man, been a lot of places, done a lot of things, but he knew that God was calling him to something new, something different. And he'd given his life to Christ, but he'd never been baptized. And we began to talk about that. And then just last week, he brought his girls and his wife. And we all sat down and talked and kind of prayed together. And then he wanted to wait till today so he could start this year off new with a moment, a marker, where he said, listen, I want to go public with what God's done in my heart. And so, man, we love you, bro. We're so glad you're here and the way you're leading your family. But one question for you is the Lord and Savior of your life. Jesus Christ. And on that profession of faith, I get to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit of Christ. And raise the walk and lead us to life, you guys, bro. Hey, and uh, so this is Nikki, and uh, I love Nikki. I mean, Robert's a lot of fun, and he's got the jokes, but Nikki, I'm going to tell you, she's just sweet, and, and she's just fun to talk to, and the more we've been around this couple, the more I've just grown to appreciate them and, and who they are, and Nikki grew up in Tennessee. And so it's been a big change to go from, uh, from there to here, and she's getting used to things here at Justin. One of the things we talked about was finding community. And you're going to hear us talk about it more today, but being in a house church and finding a place where it's just like-minded people as she steps into this walk with Christ. And so one question for you is the Lord and Savior of your life. Jesus Christ. And on that profession of faith, I get to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ, and ready to walk in the midst of life. Good job. Ready to go. <laughs> Come on, and this is Lily Ann, and y'all, she is beautiful. And uh, we talked about her hair, how beautiful it is. She wanted to dye it. We said that's not a good idea. It's just too pretty. But, uh, man, listen, she's been a part of KXP, and she's a fourth grader. And uh, she loves her KXP class, and she's been talking. She's been talking to her parents, and uh, really, she's just been exploring, what would it be like to give my life to Christ? And she's here today, and she's confident in this, and she's comfortable, and she knows that God loves her. And so, hey, Lynn, one question for you. Who's the Lord and Savior of your life? Jesus Christ. Man, on that profession of faith, I get to baptize you today, okay? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And hold your nose. Buried with Christ. <laughs> Raised to walk in newness of life. Good job, y'all. Way to go. You know, some of you may be like, hey, why are they dunking those people? Uh, Jesus put before us a beautiful picture of what happens when you have an encounter with him that changes you. That the water, is nothing special about the water. It's that you put somebody under the water to say, that person's dead. Sally's dead, 14. 
has come to live a brand new life. Listen, this year the word is be, be aware that God wants to have an encounter with you. I found something. I'm going to give this to you real quick, and this is extra. This is, this is extra. Probably won't give this to everybody. But at the same place 2,000 years earlier, Jacob was there. This is Jacob's well. Uh, this is chapter 28, and, and he laid down, and he had this dream, okay? And the dream was a ladder of these angels ascending and descending from heaven. Wouldn't that be cool? These angels going back and forth to heaven. And he laid down, and he woke up the next morning. This is what he said. He said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Listen to me. That's one of the most dreadful things you can possibly realize is that God had an encounter prepared for you. He was all around you, but you weren't aware of it. I'm going to ask you to do something. Bow your heads and nobody's walking anywhere or doing anything. Just, just bow your heads for a second. And just put your hands out in front of you. Just look down at your hands for a second. And, and this year, if you want to have a year that is amazing that is filled with peace and power pleasure all those things that we look for everywhere else just look down at your hands and say God these are your hands and I am open to whatever you want to do in and through my life wherever you want me to go whatever you want me to do Whatever you want me to start, whatever you want me to stop. Because I want to know and do your purpose for my life. Father, I thank you today that, that you love us so much that you created us. And God, we weren't an accident. We, we weren't like a, a problem. We, we were your children. We're your children. And you've got a reason for us being here. God, you've got a plan for us. It's better than any plan we could ever come up with. And so, Father, I pray this year you would reveal yourself to us. And that we could say with Paul in Colossians, whatever we do, we do it for you. We don't do it for man. And we know that you will reward us in due time. Father, we pray that you would make us aware of you from this moment forward. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.